In this video, I'm going to be talking about the concepts, calculations, and graphs associated with constant velocity. And when you're thinking about constant velocity, it's something that has the same or a constant rate of movement. So just something that has the same velocity and that may mean that it's moving fast or slow or not even moving at all if that constant velocity is zero. And what that really means, it's moving the same increment for every second that it goes. So if it's moving for, we'll say four seconds, then throughout the duration that it's moving, it's moving the same distance per second that it moves. So for example, if it's moving two meters per second, then it's sliding over exactly two meters for every second that it moves. And then it would move from two to four to six to eight and then so on. Okay, so if we're talking about constant velocity, uh, the second thing is that the acceleration is always zero meters per second squared which means that you're adding zero meters per second every second, keeping that velocity exactly the same. Now, moving on to the calculations, the calculations are gonna be solved with one of two formulas. You have velocity equals delta x over t, which is the displacement over time, or you'll have speed equals distance over time, both of which look pretty similar to each other. Velocity just has some vectors, which means that it could come out positive or negative, and then speed is just strictly the magnitude so it's just only giving you positive numbers of how fast the object is moving how far it's going and then how long it's going to take okay now the good thing about these calculations are that you're only going to have to solve for three possible things which is how fast it's moving how far it's moving from its original position and how long it takes so i'm going to go ahead and show you the setup for each one of those three calculations All right, there they are. Um, so I only set up two calculations because this one is already set up for velocity. So you don't really have to do too much math there. You're just gonna take the displacement and divide it by the time, but everything is all set up for you in that original formula. If you're looking for the Delta X or the displacement, you are going to cross multiply the T up and over, which is the same thing as multiplying on both sides by T. And then you're gonna have vt equals delta x so if you want to find out how far it goes you go velocity times time and then the final one is you're cross multiplying both of these over if you're solving for the time and then the time equals the delta x divided by the v now if you're using the speed formula um, all the same mathematical operations go if you have speed it's just distance over time and if you're looking for the distance then you're going to do distance equals speed times time and then if you're looking for the time time equals the distance divided by the velocity so that's how to set up and isolate each of the three variables for velocity displacement and time and again if you're just working with um, the speed formula that's how you find speed distance and time All right, now going to the very last section, we have a position versus time graph, velocity versus time graph, and acceleration versus time graph. And we already know the acceleration is zero every single time. So we know our graph is gonna be sitting right on the x-axis 100% of the time. So we are never gonna leave anywhere besides that position for something that's moving at a constant velocity because we know that velocity isn't getting greater or smaller. Now for a position versus time graph, if we have something moving forward, it's gonna be a straight positive slope. And if it has a constant velocity and the same rate of change, then it's gonna have a completely flat line on the velocity versus time graph, okay? This slope is gonna give you 
that exact velocity for the second one. So if I saw for the slope and I got exactly two meters per second, I'm gonna put this line right at two. Now, if my object is going a little bit faster, we know my um, shape is gonna look just about the same, except it's gonna be tilted. It's gonna have a little bit more steepness there, which means the slope would be greater. Say we calculate the slope, maybe it's four meters per second. It's just gonna be a completely flat line, except it's gonna be higher up on the X axis or excuse me, on the y-axis to show that it's a greater velocity. Now, if it's traveling the other direction, then it's just gonna have a negative slope. Okay, so it's still gonna be a straight slope. If you solve for it, you would just get a negative number. So if you got something like negative two meters per second, you just slide right underneath the x-axis and then you would have a completely flat line under zero. And again, just a reminder, all of these graphs, if we, if we were to draw them for the acceleration versus time graph, um, I already drew the green one in there. The red one would fall right on here. And then the blue one would also fall right on here too. All of them would be right on zero because we have no change in velocity. Therefore, we have zero acceleration. And then the final graph that you might see on a constant velocity graph would be something that is completely motionless. And that would be any line that is completely flat. Okay, that flat line could be anywhere in the position versus time graph, because if you're sitting at the same position, whether it's at 10 or it's at five or it's at two, that means you're not moving. That just means that wherever you're still, you might be farther or closer from the origin. And if there is no slope there, that means you have exactly zero for the velocity. And same thing, you have zero acceleration as usual, so all of those are gonna fall on zero meters per second squared. Now for a quick recap for the concepts, we have anything that's the exact same velocity, which means it has no acceleration. That means it's scooting over the same amount every second, whatever that may be. And you'll be solving for three things potentially, which is velocity, a delta X displacement, or a T for time. If you're using the speed formula and just taking a look at the magnitude of the values that you're going to go ahead and use one of these three formulas. Now, graphically, you're going to have all perfectly straight lines on a position versus time graph. Those straight lines might be slanted in the positive or negative direction. That just tells you which way the object is moving. Is it moving uh, away from the or origin or towards that steepness of the slope, how much it's tilted up or down vertically is going to tell you how quickly it's moving. On your velocity versus time graph, you're always gonna have a perfectly flat line. That flat line is gonna be determined by how fast the object is going, whether it's positive or negative. If it's a greater positive or negative, it's just gonna be farther from the zero, um, whether that's up or down. If it's completely motionless and there is no slope, then you're gonna be right on zero for the velocity versus time graph. And again, for all of these four graphs, you're dead on zero for the acceleration versus time graph. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand constant velocity. Thank you for watching and listening.